Yo, what's up? This is Nichols Mindset. Another vlog out here. I didn't get up too early, but I got up here right when it's hot and it's sunny. Whew, burning already. It's only what, like, not even 10 o'clock yet. But yeah, it is what it is. As you probably notice, I haven't been running a lot lately. You know, you get up at age, you gotta save those knees. So, and then also I read that, you know, it's best to try to do walking because you can still get that same benefit. Because they say that when I was, and actually I didn't realize it, but I, now that after I came across this knowledge, now I understand it is true because when you do a lot of running, when you're running, you're going into a, that higher uh, threshold where you're burning a lot more uh, glucose. So when you burn a lot of more glucose, you put more stress on your body. And then after you finish, you tend to eat a lot more than you normally would. So, but when you're walking, I usually try to stay in zone two. Like, don't let my heartbeat go over 100, 120, 115. So, so actually I can walk an hour or two hours and come home and not feel overwhelmed and want to just grub on everything, eat everything in the kitchen. So that's one of the things I learned. So it's all about mixing up, but I will step it up a bit more later on when, uh, cause I'm looking to run the, the Singapore Marathon again. I did it last year for the first time. Cause I actually it's August. I mean, it's June now. Last year I started around June, July started running because I started out six months early so I probably start around July and get ready for that again so the time to beat this time is 500 I mean uh five hours five hours 40 minutes I did it because I wanted to break six the idea was to break four but I wasn't in so much shape so the idea now is just to lose some weight do a lot of extended fasting just intermittent fasting so I can get the weight down so, you know, I'm not carrying so much extra weight running for 26 miles because I could put a lot of damage on your knees. So that's the goal right now. But uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, a lot of other blocks, really, most of the time people want to start their goals at the end of the year, at the beginning of the year. So I'm actually going to wait. I'm actually doing mines now. I don't want to wait to the beginning of the year, the beginning of the week, the beginning of the month. Just go out and get it right now. So. I'm actually looking to really push myself and overcome that procrastination that we all try to fight every day. It's a constant battle. You know, I'm always dealing, because I remember watching this TED talk and I'm always dealing with the, the panic monster. You know, once everything comes down to the end, that's when you really want to get things going when you only have a day left, an hour left, a minute left, and then you want to do everything last minute. So the goal is to really write down the goals and tell myself this is what I'm gonna do and uh, aim aim to go out and do it because I don't want to wait because in order to be successful because you just got to go out there and set your mind to it and do it because everybody got the same 24 hours I got I got the same 24 hours that's a billionaire guy I got the same 24 hours that an Elon Musk has a president of Obama whoever it is we all have the same 24 hours so it's about utilizing the 24 hours because if you really break it down the data we actually sleep most of our life so and then if you're working a nine to five that's another eight hours gone so really the time that you really have to really make things happen is quite less so that's why i always talk about you got to really safeguard your time because you can't that's one thing you can't get back and I notice it because sometimes I notice where, oh, I'm going to do this opportunity when I was doing like network marketing. I'm going to do this opportunity. But I jumped from, I had that actually that shiny, the shiny object syndrome. I was jumping from opportunity to opportunity to opportunity. And then when I look back like 10 years from the first opportunity that I was with, if I would have stuck with it, I would have been with the guys that are walking across the stage. But I went on to another opportunity. And the same thing happened because I just got excited. I keep getting excited, keep getting excited. So I really, you know, we all got to really work on ourselves and really be more determined and really write down our goals, have your vision board. I mean, honestly, I don't do none of that, but I always 
constantly have it in my mind, but to be a, a student of what I'm talking about, I also gotta do it myself. So we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. I've been watching a lot of videos on productivity because that's what it's all about is getting as much productivity out of that day. It's important. So that's the way out here walking. Nice sunny day here in Singapore. Haven't been back to the US. Looking to go back to the US around November this year with the whole family. So that's one thing that's on the on the uh, on the cuffs, and uh, also looking to really build that side hustle we call it because the side hustle is something that we all have to do, and that's something that I put in my book because you definitely don't want to get blindsided where you feel that uh, you you got the secure job, you're working that nine to five job, and next thing you know. You can be out of a job just like that because your name is not on that business and they can get rid of you at any time. Wow, very busy today. A lot of people riding bikes out here, walking, running. So that's one thing I like about Singapore is everybody's always exercising. Everybody's always moving. You got uncles right here. My man right there, he's running. He's riding his bike. So it's, it's very vibrant. Everybody's moving. But today, I'm just taking a nice stroll. Actually, I was uh, watching some YouTube videos earlier. And I was really thinking about this AI stuff. This AI stuff is really starting to blow up. I mean, I actually signed up for the ChatGPT4, which I feel personally is a game changer with the plugins, things like that. And so, and then I was coming across AI uh, automation agency, things like that. So quite some interesting stuff out there. So I'm starting to uh, really dig down into that, the AI and really understanding how it works and how we can uh, get on board with it and don't get left behind because that's what it's all about is there's some people oh let me fix this yeah there's some people that just oblivion to the change in times and that's one thing you don't want to want to do you want to stay current because if you get left behind you can be out of business out of a job you know you can really be displaced and that's what we don't want so I was, I, was, I was around during the, the Google time. I kind of missed the Bitcoin era. And so now it's about trying to, uh, you know, leverage this AI and get the most out of it. And don't let it get the most out of you. All right, so I encourage you, if you don't, if you haven't started uh, looking into open AI, chat GPT, all this stuff that's coming out over the days, the mid journey where you can be a, a photographer so easy. These are things you want to really look into because it really can enhance your your, uh, your skill set. So now, because they have these things now, is like when you go to a job, there's some jobs looking for a prompt engineer or a head of the, uh, the AI uh, department. And so if you can actually learn more skills, you become more valuable in the workspace. That's one thing I learned. You can't be a one trick pony. You can't come in and be oblivion to all these other aspects of, of your job. You want to be able to say, hey, I do A, but I also can do B, C, and D very well. And so, so you come in with more, more talents, more things on your resume. So when you come in, we have five candidates that are all the same, then you have to set yourself apart because now everybody can do everything pretty much. And so that's where the AI comes in. So now most companies are like, hey, I, normally they would hire maybe five people for a certain department or 10 people for a certain department. Now maybe you only need three because now I can get somebody who learned, knows how to use prompt engineering where he can do 10 people's jobs by using the AI. And cause it's, it's cases where, you know, before you can just use Google and you can get the answer. But now I can, I can be that person that does the copyright. I can be the person that sends out the company emails. I can be the person that does the, the newsletters all this and that and so i can pretty much get a rough draft and have that done and sent to our our copywriter so it's saving time because nowadays where we're living in we have to save time it's all about saving time so yeah that's that's what i'm talking about today you know no really script just free flowing that you know what's on my mind here so yeah so let's just go ahead and recap real fast get on board with the ai if you haven't set your priorities be productive. Don't don't try to avoid the shiny object syndrome. 
that can be also not so also not just in business it can be in jobs you can job hunt job keep jumping jobs jumping jobs jump job job hopping job hopping because this job pays this more or this job has this benefit or this job is you know works at home this job is a hybrid you know whatever it may be just find something stick with it and start building all right or stop increasing your knowledge increasing your your skill set because the, the more you sharpen your skill set the more valuable you come and sometimes it'd be harder for them people to companies to get rid of you because they'd be like oh wait this guy he's a prompt engineer he does the same thing as everybody but he has a he's a prompt engineer he's able to leverage ai at a way that we're not you know accustomed to let's keep him and then we get rid of the rest so you got to have that that factor that distinguishes you from the rest you got to be have that unique factor so that's all it is today man i mean i'm trying to spit some game and uh i hope everybody starts to understand that how important it is man because me being 45 years old or uh, coming up to 45 I know I look young, don't leave it in the comments. But yeah, I'm still learning. Even though I'm at the age where, you know, I, I can close my mind off and be like, nah, I don't need to learn anymore. You know, I'm good where I'm at. No, no. In society, you had to keep learning. In Singapore, they call this thing, they have this thing called the, uh, the, the constantly learning, uh, I forget the, uh, I forget the name of it, but anyway, it's about continuing to learn, continuing to uh, sharpen your skills. And that's what that's what I'm about. Even though I'm at a certain age, I got to keep on trying, keep on broadening my skills. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, so that is what it is. Make sure um, I'm looking to uh, post some more uh, podcasts that is like, uh, next week. So definitely check out those short five to ten minutes uh, podcasts on all type of topics get that uh dose of knowledge because learning is learning you got to keep learning and so and we got a lot of things on the pipeline and so sometimes you have to just put yourself out there because like i mentioned i think it was a, in my one of my uh blog posts my other vlogs where you gotta you gotta put yourself out there and and be accountable for what you put out there into the world because if nobody knows then i mean you you have two options you can put it out there to the world or you can be that person who just works in the background and then it just shows like like the nba players or professional players all you see is the uh the polished product on the basketball court on the football field or on the tennis court but you never see the behind the scenes and that's one thing that i really like is some people like to see the finished product i like to see the process but that's in a whole nother a whole nother vlog i'm gonna get into that all about you know trusting the process understanding the process but we're gonna get into that so all right nickel's mindset make sure you check us out podcast and stay tuned to the next one